Lowry Markkinen is a very desirable trade asset for the Utah Jazz and honestly one of the most marketable stars in the NBA that has the ability to be moved around without very much issue to be had. He's not the biggest social butterfly when it comes to talking to the media and usually what he says goes under the radar. He's a very media friendly type of guy. He gets along with his teammates really well and over the past two seasons with the Utah Jazz, he's really blossomed and come into his own. He's due for an extension and the Utah Jazz will end up likely paying him out as best as possible. And while most people feel as though they should keep him in the Utah Jazz fandom, others feel as though it might be more lucrative to trade him away. And today in this video, we're going to be talking about one specific team that might be able to provide a interesting haul in exchange for the man that would also allow Larry Markkinen to immediately be on a contender and not show the Jazz necessarily dropping off from where they are already, considering they're at the bottom of the conference, but also giving them a surprising amount of draft compensation that could allow them to move up to even greater heights. Thanks for tuning in this video. It's your boy Wraith Hoops. Go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And in exchange, I will give you guys the most concise breakdown possible to give you guys an educated understanding of the situation. Let's go ahead and get into this one. The first trade that we will be discussing will be Lowry Markkinen and the possibility of him going to the New York Knicks. Now, as we remember, Julius Randle went out with injury and ended up having a surgery that kept him out the remainder of the season. The Knicks were a very good team despite it, and going into the playoffs, they honestly had the opportunity, if OG Ananobi didn't get hurt, to go into the conference finals and face off against the Celtics. And with a fully tooled version of the New York Knicks, I feel as though they probably could have given the Celtics the best run for their money. And while I don't know if they could have beaten them, the Boston Celtics without Porzingis are a much more beatable squad because Al Horford is kind of aging in the twilight years of his career. That said though, Julius Randle is one of the most expendable pieces on that roster that has any value at all. And honestly, that would be the big piece that would end up getting sent over. Now, one league insider actually put together a trade proposal that would end up with Larry Markkinen being the only piece from the Utah Jazz having to be sent over. No draft picks or anything else. And in exchange, the Knicks would end up sending Julius Randle rights to the 24th pick in this year's draft, rights to the 25th pick in this year's draft, as well as the 2026 first round draft pick, a 2028 first round draft pick from the Knicks. So all in all, it comes down to four first round draft picks, two of which being in this year, and then Julius Randle. So it does kind of satisfy the youngish talent standpoint, as well as the four first round draft picks. Are they going to be the most valuable? Who's to say? This year, though they are 24th and 25th, it's still going to be helpful in the pursuit of potentially getting another star. But one could ask, if you trade away Larry Marketing, does that open up space for a new star to come? Yes. But does it make a new star want to come there? And that answer might be no, because no other star is willing to really just sit through mediocrity and really stand the test of time. Ever since probably Damian Lillard, if you want to argue, when he was with the Trailblazers because they had quite a few years where they just couldn't piece anything together around him to allow him to be more successful than he was, which is why he eventually went to the Bucks. But you also find yourself in a situation to where Julius Randle could be offsetting enough to give you just a little bit more firepower from a off the dribble standpoint, though his jumper isn't nearly as close to Larry Markkinen's. He's more of an on-ball creator, and since the Jazz don't have a point guard that can effectively distribute the ball the way they would prefer him to be able to, it allows them to kind of mix and match things a little bit better. The four first round picks nevertheless will end up being four first rounders, two of them being this year. And if the Jazz do elect to go ahead and trade away all the draft picks from this year to either move up in this draft or to get another all-star caliber player, I think that it would be in their best interest to at the very least entertain a deal of this sort. Julius Randle isn't that far cry off of Larry Mark and his play. They are two different types of players, which is one thing that you do want to watch out for. He does kind of overlap with some of the other pieces that they have on the team, but he's also not an alpha male 
for this roster, to be quite honest, because he wasn't an alpha for the New York Knicks. It ended up being Jalen Brunson when he came over there, which was credit to the Knicks for that and Tom Thibodeau because we saw a lot out of those guys. And when they picked up OG Ananobi and around the trade deadline, things got even spicier for them. And it really just showed how little they really need Julius Randle and how they can afford to go ahead and re-sign OG. And you also know that you need to take back Hartstein and there's gonna need to be some money to go around for that. If you are the Utah Jazz, those two draft picks that you would receive in this year's draft, along with the later picks that you end up having in the first round, that's four first round picks right here that you could go ahead and front space to any team that would be interested, even if you had to offer a little bit more to make things lucrative or just have a salary match situation with a couple of more role players that are on the roster. Do I necessarily love this trade if I'm the Utah Jazz? Not necessarily just because I'm not the greatest fan of Julius Randle. If you are the New York Knicks, considering the fact that you don't necessarily need Julius Randle, considering the run that you just had in the playoffs without the guy and how you didn't have for most of the second half of the season, you're already near contender status. I would argue they are contenders. So you're really just one piece away or really just health away. And adding on Lowry Marketing, though he doesn't present much of a significant defensive upgrade, I think that he is a little bit better and a little bit rangier, obviously, with him being a seven footer over Julius Randle, who's kind of boxy ish, kind of doesn't, he doesn't really move his feet well. I'm not going to sit there and say he has two left feet, but he's not the greatest defender, put mildly. If you tack on the fact that Larry Markkinen is an elite shooter, not just a good shooter, but an elite shooter, and he does most of his damage off the catch, he doesn't take away possessions from Jalen Brunson, who will end up creating for himself. He'll be a much more reliable shooter than Josh Hart was even in the first round in the playoffs this year. And Dante DiVincenzo won't have to worry about having to work off of Larry Markkinen. And Larry Markkinen can be the potential lob threat. He also can be a great pick and pop situational player. And he can just spray and be a great outlet pass, whether it be in the corners at the top of the key, or on the wings. He really has no discrepancies in his game that wouldn't be exploitable. And he wouldn't have to necessarily round out his game in the sense of shot creation for himself because he would have Jalen Brunson as the lead guard and Dante DiVincenzo offsetting as well to allow him to get into those spots. In a world where you could potentially have Jalen Brunson, OG Ananobi, Lowry Markkinen, Josh Hart, and Dante DiVincenzo as your starting five, if you don't wanna switch in Hartstein and leave him in there, I still think that's a really great five to have. And honestly, that puts them anywhere with talent as far as anybody's concerned, especially in the East, where it's been known for being notoriously weak this past year. And really the Celtics got their way to the championship off of just poor health on everybody else's part. So if you look at a healthy Knicks team, add Larry Markin in when you already wouldn't have to worry about the trade of the guy that you're sending out and you have nothing to worry about. But let me know, do you think that Larry Markkinen is for one fit to play alongside the New York Knicks team? Myself, personally, as I just laid down in front of you, I feel as though he is. He doesn't take away possessions from the ball dominant players that they already have, and he can still get his off the catch. Mind you, less than 10 of his overall made threes came in situations where he was dribbling. Most of them were assisted. So he will not take away from anybody's offensive dominance. He will only be capable of complementing what they already have. And if you didn't have to worry about Julius Randle and you saw what your team was able to do even throughout injuries and aches and pains and high level minutes through the entirety of this playoff stint this season in 2024, I think that you feel really comfortable adding in a guy who could potentially be your number two, number three, who's going to be very easy to get along with. He's not going to have the greatest pull from an egotistical standpoint, and he's just going to be able to give you what you need night in and night out, regardless of how everybody else is performing. And if you're on the Jazz side, you also will receive a lot more of the draft compensation that you were hoping to have and will allow you to either move up in the draft or potentially shift things around and bag that extra star with literally the greatest haul of draft picks quite possibly imaginable alongside a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder who are already at the top of the mountain as it is. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. It's your boy Ray Thoops. Thanks for tuning in this video. As always, good morning, good evening, and good night, no matter where you're on the globe watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.